Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this series of lectures, we are talking about post-transcriptional modification in eukaryotic mRNA. This video is about the mRNA splicing, which is one of the most important part of the post-transcriptional modification to the eukaryotic mRNA. Right after the transcription in eukaryotes, when the RNA is produced from the DNA inside the nucleus, that RNA is premature, so we call it pre-mRNA. That premature mRNA or pre-mRNA need to be converted into a mature form of mRNA. And this process of maturation involves RNA splicing, it involves 5' prime capping, it involves 3' prime polyadenylation and occasionally involves RNA editing. So we have talked about all the other processes, all the other mechanisms in other videos. I want you to watch those videos in my playlist of this eukaryotic RNA processing. In this particular lecture, we are going to focus on splicing mechanism. What is RNA splicing? How RNA splicing is done? What are the constituents of RNA splicing? What are the types of RNA splicing? And what is the mechanism of RNA splicing? We are going to see all of this in details in this particular lecture. So let's begin to talk about it. First, what you need to understand is that RNA splicing is an event where a physical part of RNA, of eukaryotic RNA is cut out and other parts are kept. So if we consider this as a eukaryotic RNA, then there are different sections in it. Let's imagine these wavy patterns, the wavy sections are introns and the straight sections drawn here are exons. Okay. So for example, in this stretch, we have three exons and two introns. So in the process of RNA splicing, what we should have is that we will only keep exons and the introns uh, will be cleaved out. The introns will be cleaved out and will only end in exons joined together. This in very simple word is the mRNA splicing in eukaryotes, keeping the exons together, cut introns out from the pre-mRNA. This is pre-mRNA transcript. And after the splicing is done, this is spliced out RNA and this RNA will have further modification. If we consider this as a 5 prime, this as a 3 prime, it should have a cap at 5 prime and it should have multiple adenine, polyadenylation at 3 prime. And this particular RNA with spliced out introns and all the exons joined together with 5 prime cap, 3 prime polyadenylation. This one will be termed as mature, mature mRNA. This mature mRNA will be used, it will be utilized for further processes like translation. So this will make proteins in eukaryotes. This is how this process is done. This is a very simple straightforward process of RNA splicing in eukaryotes. But let's talk about the location, the positions of all this. And you see the location of uh, the splicing event, capping, polyadenylation, everything is nucleus. And the location of protein synthesis is cytoplasm. This is cytosol. Okay, that's the only difference. The location of splicing, polyadenylation, 5' prime capping, everything inside the nucleus. And in many cases, the RNA editing also takes place in the nucleus. In some occasions, take place in other places. But the protein synthesis in eukaryote always take place in the cytosol. But after producing proteins, some of these proteins, they remain in the cytosol. Some of these proteins move to organelles. And some of the proteins also migrate inside nucleus. Remember this. The proteins are necessary in every single part of the cell. It is necessary to go inside the nucleus. It is necessary to be transported to the mitochondria, chloroplast, and any other organs like that. It is necessary to keep the proteins. Where? To keep the proteins also in the cytosol. So these are all important uh, locations of the protein movement. We have already discussed about protein production and movement. You can watch the lectures separately in this channel. But now what we intend to talk is every single bits and pieces of this RNA splicing and how the RNA splicing is done. Okay, so these are the some uh, these are some steps that uh, are involved in the process of RNA splicing, the mechanism of RNA splicing per se. But before going in there, I must answer one of the most asked question from here is that: Do we really need energy to continue with RNA splicing? The answer to that is 
in many occasions we do require energy for rna splicing there are different types of rna splicing processes like there are self splicing process which is also known as auto splicing means rna itself splice itself right so that is a self catalyzation that means rna acting as an enzyme and cleaves itself and rejoin itself so that is a self auto splicing which generally do not require any energy in the form of atp but apart from that any other form of splicing event be it spliceosome mediated splicing be it alternative splicing we do require energy okay all right so what we intend to talk here right now is regarding the energy requirement of splicing and if you talk about the energy requirement we have different types of splicing remember we have self splicing or auto splicing here and what we have here we have spliceosome mediated splicing the self splicing uh, can be group 1 2 3 or 4 type of splicing and spliceosome mediated splicing simply it is only spliceosome or it can be alternative alternative splicing so both spliceosome mediated splicing and alternative splicing it requires energy in form of atp but the auto splicing the self splicing event does not require atp in many occasions when there is uh, involvement of single rna and single rna is acting as an enzyme as a ribozyme and fix the issue of splicing it it fixes all the steps of the splicing process okay so now we are going to give you a detailed uh, idea about the location of different types of splicing uh, and we'll see the self splicing the spliceosome mediated splicing and we'll see the locations of all this okay so let's start with the self splicing events so in case of self splicing introns the splicing reaction occur within the rna molecule itself means basically there is no other location basically the work is done by the rna itself i already mentioned it earlier that the rna acts as a ribozyme in order to cut itself and join the exons cut out the introns so there are different types of self splicing like group 1 group 2 group 3 and group 4 types group 1 found in some bacteria archaea or organelles such as mitochondria and chloroplasts this is where group 1 introns are found second one is group 2 introns found in bacteria archaea and eukaryotes including some organelles such as mitochondria then comes the group 3 introns found in certain eukaryotic Uh, nuclear uh, encoded r rna genes basically you know the self splicing events are particularly seen in archaea in bacteria and organelles not in the nuclear rna but group 3 introns are a type of introns uh, and type of process of self splicing that is occurred that is found in eukaryotic nuclear encoded r rna molecules and then the group 4 types found in bacteriophages and bacteria only so among all the self splicing events uh, the group 3 introns are unique because that is found in eukaryotic nuclear coded r rna genes then comes the spliceosome mediated splicing in eukaryotes most splicing occurs through spliceosome which is a large ribonucleoprotein complex snrnps as an rnas are involved in this process nuclear pre mrna splicing takes place in the nucleus of eukaryotes spliceosome assembles and pre mrna transcripts form in the nucleus itself u12 type splicing is also there a minor spliceosome recognizes and removes a specific subset of introns that have u12 type splice sites which is a very unique very specific type of splice sites which are present in few occasions very very particular event and then comes organelle rna splicing in mitochondria and chloroplast splicing uh, is another very common an event specific spliceosomes are involved in the splicing in their rna transcripts of mitochondria and chloroplasts but remember that the self splicing can also be visualized and seen in the organelles chloroplast but organelle specific rna splicing is also uh, present in the splicing events so these are all the different types of splicing and their respective locations in different organisms and cells so i believe you have a clear idea now now what is the difference between this self splicing and spliceosome mediated splicing it's very important to understand so the self splicing event is something that lacks involvement of different complicated machinery and proteins for the splicing event the similar mechanism will be used by the spliceosome mediated splicing but in case of spliceosome mediated splicing there will be involvement of many different 
proteins those those are known as small nuclear ribo nucleo proteins sn rnps okay and they have short nuclear rnas or sn rnas so short nuclear ribo nucleo proteins are proteins which are connected to small stretch of fragments of rnas which are nuclear rnas that means the origin and working place for those rnas are nucleus we know there are different rnas the origin is nucleus but the work locations are cytosol but these rnas have origin and work location both are nucleus so they are known as short nuclear rnas and the short nuclear rnas very small fragments of rnas associated with protein known as short nuclear ribo nucleo proteins so this sn rnps or short nuclear ribo nucleo proteins they are present in the nucleus and they help in the whole process of splicing in eukaryotes in higher eukaryotes in organisms in those cases we have spliceosome mediated splicing in the next lecture we'll talk about alternative splicing in detail so i'll keep alternative splicing out from discussion in this particular lecture so without any further due delay well, let's go into the steps of the splicing mechanism because when you understand the steps of the splicing mechanism you'll understand that mechanism wise the process is very similar with the group 1 group 2 intron mediated group 1 group 2 group 3 mediated uh, splicing there is a self splicing and the spliceosome mediated splicing the, in, the the process the mechanism is very similar the only different thing the only difference will be in terms of the proteins involved and how they function together okay and the, and the level of complexity is something that is different other than that rest of them are very similar i'll take a different color now with it blue I'll start explaining this. So the very first step is recognition of exon intron boundaries. So, so to understand the splicing event, first of all, you need to understand the structure of RNA that is ready for splicing. So this is the RNA, that premature RNA for splicing. And remember one thing is that let's let's draw. Let's say this is a exon, is an intron. Let's say this is another exon. We are talking about two particular exons joining together, and uh, we have this five prime. Uh, terminal we have three prime terminal so what we can simply say uh, in this in the middle so this is the intron in the middle this is exon one this is exon two so exon one is towards the five prime end of the RNA exon two is towards the three prime end of the RNA and intron is in the middle so the typical structure of a pre mRNA before splicing should carry a five prime splice site so this is the very first splice site this is known as Five prime splice site, okay. That is present between the five prime exon and intron. So that is intron exon boundary and near five prime, so five prime splice site. And this one is again intron exon boundary, but near three prime, so we'll call it three prime splice site. Clear? And in the intron, somewhere in the middle here, we have a a with two prime hydroxyl group free. This is known as branch point. Branch point. Okay. So this is a simple structure of the pre-sliced mRNA. Carries a five prime splice site, three prime splice site, and a branch point that is somewhere in the intron. Two prime hydroxyl from A adenosine is that serving as a two prime splice site. Okay. Very simple. No big deal. Now what I'll draw here, I'll simply draw the same picture here. This is exon one, this is exon two, and this is the branch point to make you understand how the process works. So the very first step is recognition of exon intron boundaries. So what are the exon intron boundaries in here? I'll again change the color. We have here exon intron boundaries. This is one. This is another boundary. Okay. So first we'll recognize those boundaries. This assembly of spliceosome. Then the spliceosome will start assembling themselves. So what we mean by assembly of spliceosome? We know spliceosome means there are internally proteins, small proteins, small nuclear ribo nucleo proteins. Ribo nucleo proteins means these proteins they have a RNA structure and they have rest of the protein units attached to that RNA structure. This is how the ribo nucleo proteins look like. They have a short fragment of RNA. With the proteins associated with it, 
So this ribonucleoprotein, short nuclear ribonucleoproteins containing short nuclear RNAs, they bring themselves together and they assemble themselves. Okay. So where do they assemble themselves? Basically, in the five prime splice site, we have U1 spliceosome that is short nuclear ribonucleoproteins. They are known as different like U1, U2, U3, U4, U5. They are different array of proteins like that. Okay. Uh, I'll show one image at the end of the lecture to give you the idea about all the U and their roles in the process of splicing. But remember one thing that U1 interacts to the five prime splice site and U2 interacts to the branch point. Okay. So U1 here in the five prime splice site and U2 where in the branch point. This is very important to understand. You should remember this very clearly. And then afterwards, rest of the other ribonucleoproteins will come. U, U3, U4, U5, 6, 7 complex and all the other proteins will engage themselves. And then there will be spliceosome activation. The spliceosome will be activated. Okay. After that, the spliceosome will be activated. So what do you mean by activation of spliceosome? Is when all the short nuclear ribonucleoproteins come uh, to the play and they arrange themselves. They cover the 3' prime splice site, the 5' prime splice site and the branch point. Then the activation requires ATP utilization in case of spliceosome mediated splicing. Because we are looking at spliceosome mediated splicing, so they will rearrange themselves there. Alright, so in this case what we are drawing, we are going to draw this. And what we have, we have exon 1 here, uh, we have exon 2 here. Let's say we have intron and we have this branch point in the center. Okay, very simple drawing. So what we want to see is that we know that the boundaries are recognized. This is a boundary. This is a boundary and where we have attached all the important things. For example, uh, U1 is attached to the 5' splice site and U2 is attached where to the base or uh, branch point. Then what happens is the assembly of spliceosome complex as all the other proteins are involved in there. Then it starts the process, the mechanism of how this process is done. So remember we have A and we have hydroxyl here. And this hydroxyl can act as a nucleophile. So there will be a nucleophilic attack. Okay. So the nucleophilic attack will be done here to this 3' splice site. So as a result of which what happens is that the exon 1 is cleaved out. And what we have, we have exon 2 is linked with the intron branch point here like this. The very first step of the splicing event, be it self splicing or be it alternative splice, uh, be it uh, splices or mediated splicing. In that case, what happens is that the first uh, step, step number one is a trans esterification reaction. In this case, there will be nucleophilic attack by the hydroxyl from the branch point to the three prime intron exon joint. And that causes the formation of one exon or exon one released and then intron with exon 2 at a structure like this and afterwards what happens is that right after this right after this so what we know this is 5 prime and this is 3 prime so we have the hydroxyl group free here that 3 prime hydroxyl group free for the exon 1 now this 3 prime hydroxyl of exon 1 now act the same manner and can attack the 3 prime splice site. Try to understand. This hydroxyl of the exon 1 acts as a nucleophile and this attacks where the 3 prime splice site that is the splice site between intron and exon 2 and upon this second transesterification reaction what do we have? We have both the exons joint exon 1 and exon 2 joint and a structure of intron shaped like this coming out as a remnant. So that way it concludes our process. This is the second step remember that concludes our process of splicing. So what do we mean by this particular step? I will change the color here and I will explain. What you clearly see here is a process involving two steps, two chemical reactions, two enzymatic reactions. Both are trans esterification, trans esterification reaction 
and in this transesterification reaction the first interaction is done by the branch point hydroxyl and the second interaction is done by the 5 prime splice site hydroxyl in that way we end up in making exons join together and a intron structure out which is known as intron lariat so it looks like a lariat structure so that's why we call it as an intron lariat and the exon structures join together the exons join together the intron forms as a lariat in that way the splicing mechanism concludes itself the splicing mechanisms complete itself okay that's how the splicing is done and in this process of splicing can have different ways to be performed whether it is performed by self means auto catalyzing itself as a ribozyme okay ribozyme ribozyme is a is referred to rib, uh, rna when they act as an enzyme and continue the process without involvement of any other enzymes why in case of eukaryotes the higher eukaryotic organisms where the rna is lengthier and we need multiple short nuclear ribonuclear proteins in order to catalyze the particular process then we call it as a spliceosome mediated splicing but the in the eternal mechanism of spliceosome mediated splicing and auto splicing remains very similar to this that we discussed right now and remember once the process is done in case of higher eukaryotes particularly why do you require the short nuclear ribonuclear proteins because the rna fragments that are generated we need to hold them together bring them close together catalyze the reaction of joining and everything that requires different uh, you know close proximity and proximity is very important in order to complete that process so that's why we need all this so spliceosome assembly is important spliceosome disassembly is equally important and once the process are done mrna maturation uh, will be done so maturation means is a step where all the modification to the mrna is already done be it splicing be it 5 prime capping be it 3 prime polyadenylation all this process must have done properly and then the rna with only exons with 5 prime cap with 3 prime polyadenylation is called as a mature mrna and then it's exported to the cytoplasm where the protein synthesis will continue and that's how the process works so in this whole series of lectures you have seen what is the importance of 5 prime capping what is the importance of 3 prime polyadenylation and now you see the importance of splicing is because the introns don't carry uh, the codons for protein synthesis so what is the point of keeping uh, parts of rna which does not code for any protein synthesis so we should keep only the sections of rna which codes for protein synthesis which is exon and that's why we keep exons together we join them together we only have exons as a exon structures lengthier exon structure in order to continue the process of uh, rna splicing and before the protein synthesis